Adriatica Ionica stage one. Sprint stage, brake's just been caught. We've got like 3.9K to go. Astana on the front, mainly just keeping it safe uh, for their GC contenders. And it's a pretty easy run-in, to be honest. It's a completely straight, and then there's one roundabout with about 600 meters to go. So really, in terms of timing for lead outs, it's not too complicated. It is a narrow road towards the end, maybe five or six riders wide, not, not you know, nothing too crazy. Like it's not, you know, one person wide, but I still think basically tactic for this should be three riders with one kilometer to go. Riders goes from 1K to 500 meters and 500 meters to 200 meters and launches your sprint. So the Italian national team is the strongest team here. They've got Viviani, they've got um, Dainese, and they've also got uh, Cimolai as well. So three very fast guys. Then there's like Marechko, Paccioni, um, Perisco, uh, and then some other sort of third tier sprinters that you would have never heard of really, um, unless you're a keen follower of the Italian Conti team, which you may or may not be. Uh, I'm not too keen of a follower of that, and um, apart from my man Paul Double, obviously, love the man. Uh, but the sprinters wise, I don't really know them that well. They don't seem that good. But Danese is second wheel now, just following this Zalf rider, and he's pretty calm. Like, you know, there's no worries. They've got 2.7k to go. Dainese is like, okay, fair enough. I'm, you know, I only really want to be on the front with 1k to go if possible. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to let people swamp you. Uh, Buddy and HSF are sort of back there uh, in the purple kit. They have an all right sprinter, uh, like Zanoncello. Uh, and then you've also got obviously Marechko's team, which is the fluoro yellow. Um, and that is, you know, the people who, sh in my opinion, should be taking it on pretty early. I think with Marechko, you've got to really sort of pilot him around pretty well and make sure that he's in perfect position. With Viviani, I think you don't have to, but he does work well from a lead out like this. Obviously, at quick step, he had pretty good lead out towards the end with Morkov. And then when he moved over uh, to Kofidis, now he has Sabatini. It hasn't really gone that well, but, you know, I think he's only won one race this year, which is Chalet Pe Lallois Pay, something, something. Um, Chalet Pay de Lallois, I think it is. Um, and here another guy attacks from Aolo, but it's not going to happen. There's too many people invested. 1.8 kilometers to go. Dainese is doing a real, real strong job here. Like he's on the front, just drilling it, making sure that no one can, no one can really attack. Like, you know, they go in 55, 60 k an hour. Like to ride on your own at 60 k an hour, unless your Ganner is, is just not happening. Um, and Dainese just rides straight through him, which I think is also a good thing. Just keep it high. Like Viviani's in good position. And and although you know you might think, oh, this is a waste of energy. People are going to come from behind. For Viviani, he's got no sprints. He, you know, it's going to be a little bit more work because he's like third in the wheel, wheel um, instead of like tenth. But he's got no sprints. He's got no stress. Like he can just relax, and he knows exactly what he's going to do. Um, and his lead man in front of him, Chimalai, also has the same thing. So for the bit blurry footage, had to nick this off Rai. So always questionable. And Danese's done a huge job here. Now one kilometer to go, uh, and he's pulling off. So he's basically done 1.8 kilometers on the front and just strung it all out. Now Androni turn up. And the thing is, they just don't panic Viviani's team. Like, Chimalai uh, is just there, he's watching, he's like, okay, it's fine, no one wants to take it up. And this is where it can be dangerous, you know, you can get swamped. But Chimalai's like, okay, it's 700 meters to go, I could probably do 700 to like, probably like three, 400 meters to go if I really need to. Um, so here, he's not going full. You can see him not going full because, you know, it's pretty bunched up still. There's a lot of chaos. Marechko's nowhere to be seen. He's now just, uh, actually decided that he's going to go on Viviani's wheel. And I think that's realistically the best way to go. You've got to be on Viviani's wheel um, and just hope that he goes early because he's only got one rider left. And then just back yourself, I guess. Uh, but we're now coming into the final little bit. This is the roundabout I was talking about before. They go left, then they go right round it. Um, and then from here, it's like only three, 400 meters to go. And Chimolai starts to launch it. And Marechko goes now, and it's just so early, like so, so early. And Viviani is here. And when he takes off, it's just like he's on a playing a different sport. I mean, it's just not fair. Like he puts just bike gap, like basically a bike length gap into him. And he's off his wheel. Like, you know, no one even comes close to coming around him. And I think there's two things. I think the main issue was that Marechko was on his wheel, went too early. Um, and then basically, obviously, then no one was on his wheel, so it was already a length, and then trying to come across that is pretty hard. But even so, at 60k an hour, the draft is mad, so Viviani was looking really strong, obviously had the best lead out by far. Laddie came second was David Peresco for Team Corpac Balan, and then third was Luca Pacioni for Eolo Cometa. But you can see here, the gap he puts in to everyone else is mad. But we're going to go watch the helicopter footage, um, and I think that really shows you how early people went. Um, but yeah, here, like, I mean, okay, we're not going to say it's a second, but it's looking close, isn't it? Um, it was really, really strong sprint. And, you know, maybe he's going to do well. I think he's doing the tour. The cough it is, so it'll be interesting to see um, 
to see how he goes. Um, oh no, maybe he's not. Is it Laporte? He's. I mean, he's obviously going Olympics. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he goes there. I don't know. I'm really following track that much. But we're now going to scroll over to the helicopter footage, and you can see here, like this roundabout here. There's no way. Like this is perfect positioning for Italy. But if you look at Moretzko now, Moretzko starts to sprint now, and I don't understand why he's not good at that. The thing he's good at is just coming out of someone's draft at the end. But you know, he's already sprinting now, and then as soon as Viviani takes off. He's on his wheel and it's just like, cheerio, no one's getting around him. Like, Marechko just messed that up for himself and pretty much everyone else. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy and we'll see you in the next one.